other business leaders that are part of a current entourage that as they went up, they got more and more powerful, they brought other people in to support each other. There's uh, in the middle Larry Ellison, there's George Lucas, there's even Mayor Bloomberg, he's the newer member of the entourage. Below the ladies, we've got one of the most famous entourages, and that is Martin Luther King in the middle, who is the shorter gentleman, surrounded by people like Whitney Young and uh, James Farmer, Roy Wilkins. These were the group that really were responsible for the civil rights movement. Yet we only, we think of Martin Luther King, but he didn't do it alone. Not at all. He had an amazing entourage that went well beyond this, but these were his closest, closest members of his entourage. Then in the other picture, and I'm sorry it's not clear, but in the middle you've got Madeleine Albright, the first female Secretary of State, and behind her is Gloria Steinem, Faye Waddleton, uh, president of, former president of Planned Parenthood, first African-American woman to hold that role, and Sherry Lansing, uh, former president of Columbia Pictures. Now they, some of them were close early on, as their careers grew, other women came on board to support them. So it, their entourages were evolutions, but they started early. And they didn't do the great things that they did alone. <coughs> In fact, they couldn't have done it alone. They had other people who supported them, and they supported them. So how do leaders attract them? Because, you know, you just don't go out there and say, here I am, come, be part of my group. And that, that goes whether you're a leader or you're me or you. There's a few things that attract people to be part of your entourage. Your vision, your mission, your communication skills, and having a communications plan. So we're going to look at each of these briefly. Why would you need a vision? You know, companies have visions, right? But think of yourself as a company. Think of yourself as a brand. Each of us is our own brand. What's uh, what's your name? What is Paula? Paula, you're a brand. What's your name? Zaina. Zaina. Zaina? You're a brand. Your name? You are a brand. Each one of you is a brand. And just like a brand, you need to have a vision for yourself. Your vision is what you stand for as a person. And it relate, it may relate to your career. It may not. But I want you to think about in developing what your stand is, think about what are you passionate about. What is it that lights you up? What is it that makes you want to get up there? That excites you? If you had your choice of having any career in the world, what would it be? What would you do? How would you spend your time? And also think about, are you an expert in something? Or what would you like to be an expert in? These are the things that when you give thought to this, put it together and you have a vision. Your mission. Once you have the vision, then you look at what are your goals as it relates to that vision. What would be your long-term goal? Maybe it's to lead a internet company of a particular kind. I mean, it could be anything. It could be a not-for-profit you want to create. So what is your long-term goal, and then what is your short-term goal? Which will lead you, ultimately, to your long-term goal. Which will ultimately lead you to your vision coming true. So we have to be strategic, just like a company is strategic. Strategic about ourselves, and isn't it worthwhile? Who's the most important person in the world? It should be you. Not that we 
don't say that our children, our mothers, our parents, our family, of course they're very important to us. But I follow something that a very famous philosopher by the name of Fritz Perl says. And he said, take care of yourself so you can take care of others. If you're out there just taking care of everybody else, guess who gets forgotten? And you're not going to do a very good job of taking care of other people if you haven't taken care of yourself first. So get those, think about those goals. Now let's look at your communication skills. The most successful people, the people with the most helpful entourages, will be good speakers. Doesn't necessarily mean you have to get up in front of a room and speak like I do, but when you're communicating with people, you speak to them in a way that they understand what you're saying to them. You're focused. You're not all over the place. Another very important communication skill, and I actually think it's even more important than speaking, is listening. Because if we listen first to what people are saying to us, we know what to say back to them. If we've really heard them, we know what they're interested in, and then we can form our response. But if we just jump in there and start talking, we have no idea what it is they want to hear us say, do we? So I believe that listening becomes first, then speaking. Obviously, if you're an engaging person, if you have a personality, and everybody has a personality, but if you allow your personality to come out, that is a part of your communication skills. Being a proactive communicator is important, too. Not sitting on your hands and waiting to get out there and to talk to people, to listen to people, to hear people, to educate yourself. That is actually part of your communication skills. It takes courage to be out there and to create an entourage. We all need to have that courage to be brave, which sometimes means doing things we're not comfortable with. So I'm not saying you have to uh, jump off the building and bungee jump courage, but we have to be courage, courageous enough to make a phone call, go up to somebody, introduce ourselves, and just step out and say, what could happen to me if I do this? Nothing. You've got to take some chances. Talk to people after they speak. Introduce ourselves where we might not normally be comfortable doing that. So stepping out of your comfort zone. And then last with communication skills, really, really important is to be collaborative. In other words, it is collaborating with others. You talk to them, they talk to you, they do for you, you do for them. But collaboration, I think, is one of the new, most important leadership skills. Not just what we're talking about here, but to be a leader in the future, you have to be collaborative. And I think that that's one of the things we're very frustrated with right now. When we look at what's going on in our government, the lack of collaboration is why we're stuck. Nothing's happening. Because action happens when we collaborate. So you may look at this and say, well, I can do some of these apply to me, not all. Some may look at it and say, that's not me at all. Well, guess what? The good news is you can learn these skills. They're not necessarily natural born. I mean, some people are born with these skills, or some of them. But most people aren't. And you can learn it. You can practice it. You can just get it from experience. So that's the good news.